Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Well, yes, it's me. Yes, teacher. Okay. Thank you so much yes. for being here. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for being here. Just let me go ahead and share my screen with you. There we go. Okay. So, guys, thank you so much for making the time to be here. And today we're going to have a continuation right of the class that we began yesterday. And we're going to continue talking a little bit about time closes. And also we're going to be um, working a little bit with a, um, the introduction of the hypothetical situation thing, <laughs> right? Um, well, first I just try to begin a little bit, you know, with a couple of minutes in advance so we can have, you know, some time to discuss the uh, information, right, that we have in the platform. Uh, what we can do, guys, it's that at 8.15, probably, or eight, between 8.15 and 8.30, right, we can begin with um, a session for questions, right? So if you have questions about the platform, if you have questions about the exercises that we have, right? Um, it, well, specific exercises from the platform, we can go ahead and work them out, okay? So uh, today is going to, we're going to have our session two or second session, and it's January this, the 19th, right? So there is a section in the platform where they ask you, right, how were you when you were younger, right? How were you when you were younger? So as you know, guys, um, we have a ver different versions, right, of ourselves. And when we are young, right, we are, we behave in a certain way, right? Nos comportamos de una forma diferente. And there are certain characteristics or adjectives that describe you or describe me right when we were younger. So in the uh, in the manual, you can find a set of adjectives, right, that you can use to describe, you know, probably that personality that you had before, right? And that has to do a lot, right, with um, the way you behaved at that time, uh, the way you, um, believed right things were. So I'm going to show you here the manual. Give me one moment. I remember I downloaded yesterday. No sé si lo bajé acá or if it was in the download. Uh, yeah, pre avanzado tres, yes, it, it is here. Give me a second. Vamos a poner en mute mi teléfono en este momento. There we go. Okay, this is, we go here to the manual. I will tell you the page number in just a moment. Solo voy a tener aquí a la mano por cualquier cosa. Bye, we see. So I was saying, right, uh, there is a section over here, right? See, acá, okay. So there are certain um characteristics right as you can see we have a list right and it says behavior and personality behavior and personality and supposedly you are going to work in pairs right at what age do you think people tend to behave in these ways and you have to check you know one or two set of ages for that behavior so we have in their teens Teacher, what's the meaning of teens? Well, in their teens, we're talking about 15, uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, right? In their teens. Um, so remember, teenager is adolescent, right? Or oh, adolescente. So we are talking about that range of age. Then in their 20s, right? So wow, when you're in your 20s, we are, you know, um, behaving in a certain way, we have become adults, right? You know, entre comillas. <laughs> then in their 30s, right? In their 40s 
and in their 60s. So when you want to say the age in that way, you can go ahead and do it. That's not a problem. And um, that is just it, the ages, right, are divided into categories, right? Categories that can help you to identify, you know, one group within that age. So here we have some um, um, adjectives, right, of behavior and personality. So we have ambitious, right, ambitious. So guys, when we say ambitious is when you think that you can go for more, right? Like you don't want to um, stay, you know, with um, what you just got and you want to go for more. Quiere ir por más. You want to go for more. Then we have argumentative, right? So an argument is what we called in Spanish una discusión. Ah, es que we had an argument yesterday with my boss. Or I had an argument with my wife or with my husband. Or I had an argument with my friend. So argumentative is that person, you know, that is always um, in the defensive way, right? Estamos en ese modo defensivo. It's kind of defensive and defensive mode, uh -huh. this defensive mode. And it's always trying, you know, to uh, go against the, the wind, right? We have carefree, carefree. So a carefree person is that person who is, I don't want to say careless, right? But it's not careful. <laughs> Right, and it's always doing things that probably affect you know uh, the person itself or the ones around them. Right, then we have conscientious, right? Conscientious, and is that person that thinks you know uh, and is aware of the consequences of his or her actions. Right, then we got naive. Naive, yeah, así como ustedes lo escuchan, así se dice, naive, right? So naive is a per, is a person that, um, I don't want to say silly, but it's when whenever we feel that we are ignorant, right, of certain things. I was kind of naive, we say, right? So I wasn't, you know, that uh, I wasn't a careful person, right? Then we have pragmatic right i will go ahead and look for that one in just a moment because i don't i don't have an example to give you then we have rebellious i think the name says it all right el nombre lo dice todo rebellious we got that sensible person right and sophisticated just give me a moment guys let me fix something here i can hear something here from the window so bear with me Thank you, I'm back. <laughs> Fine, so this, we have that one, um, pragmatic, right? Creo que tengo una idea, pero let's go ahead and check it. Aquí está, vamos a ver. We're going to use the uh, one that we, uh, 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 the, the, the option, right, for you to um, check as I was telling you yes. Pragmatic. Pragmatic. Guys, can you hear me? Si me escuchan, verdad? Pragmatic. Well, it's pragmatic, right? And it says dealing with things sensibly and realistically in a way that is based on practical rather than theoretical considerations, right? Um, these are similar words, o sea, if we, if we say that the person is pragmatic, we're saying that the person is practical, eh, that is realistic, and that is sensible, right? It's pragmatico o practico. As you can see here, over here, pragmatico o practico. That's, you know, um, uh, that's a characteristic, you know, that has to do with a lot of people that I know, very pragmatic. 
right? And that's something, you know, uh, in a way it's a positive, it's a positive attitude. Now this word guys, sensible, sense, yeah, I think it's over here in the list, ahí está, sensible. There are two different words, okay? And sometimes we get confused. We got sensitive and sensible, right? And both are different things, okay? Las dos son dos cosas diferentes. Teacher, ¿cómo así? Vaya. When you want to know, you know, the difference between those two adjectives or between two adjectives, just type them, you know, in the search part and you will be able to find, you know, uh, information there. So a sensible person made good, made some, sorry, good decisions and judgments based on reason rather than emotion. Hmm, teacher, se oye como una persona eh, sensata. Correcto, right? So that would be the type of person, okay? Give me a moment, guys. Sorry, guys, I can hear some noises coming from the window, but I think those are cats and um, I didn't want to. No quisiera que se escuchara eso así ahorita porque estamos en la explicación. Así que, so les explicaba, right? We are, a, I mean, a sensible person is sensato, no es sensible, okay? So don't get confused with those two words, okay? Uh, she was a sensible girl and did not panic. Sensitive has two meanings, okay? Aquí ya no es sensible, aquí es sensitive. Esta que viene acá, miren, sensitive has two meanings. A sensitive person is easily upset or defended by other people's remarks or behavior. Offended, I'm sorry. Offended by other people's remarks or behavior. Solo con leer esa descripción, ¿cuál sería la, la interpretación en español? Sensitive has two meanings. A sensitive person is easily upset or offended by other people's remarks or behavior. ¿Cuál sería la traducción al español? Como delicado, como... Exactly. Sensible, right? Entonces, that's the reason why we had to be very careful, okay? Sensible, sensato. Sensitive, sensible. Okay, so uh, these these are, <laughs> well, in my case, guys, I always get confused with those two, right? Pero aquí se los comparto en el chat por si lo quieren copiar, okay? So we have those two words, right? Y recuerden, chicos, cuando nosotros tenemos vocabulario, tenemos que analizar el vocabulario, right? No solo aprendernos el significado. No, we have to learn, you know, the definition in English and also to analyze, right? what that means, okay? So, um, he, here we have all the adjectives, right? And um, so how would you describe yourself, right? When you were younger, right? So what are some of the adjectives that you could use for yourself, okay? Uh, in my case, for example, when I was in my teens, right? I was very, very, and extremely pragmatic, guys. I was very pragmatic. I was um, argumentative, right? However, you know, bes I mean, besides the fact that I was argumentative, I was also um, sensitive, not sensible, sensitive, right? And I learned with the time that I, you know, had to change that in me, right? So what about you? What, what are those characteristics that describe you when you were younger? Do we have some volunteers? Volunteers? To tell us the adjectives that can describe you? Well, in my case, in my 20s, right? En mi caso, en mis 20s. Yes, Elio. Yes, in my in my twenties, I was 
very conscientious. Conscientious. How do you say conscientious? Yeah, yeah. D don't worry. Uh, let's go ahead and do something. Vamos a ponerlo acá. Con si. Give me a second. I cannot see the spelling. This one is a difficult one. Cons. Right. Cientius. But let's listen to the pronunciation directly from here. Y me dicen si pueden escucharla. Conscientious. Can you listen to it? Yep. Okay. Yes. yes. Conscientious. Aquí está, mire. Conscientious. Conscientious. Right. Conscientious. Mm -hmm. That's good. Conscientious. Mm -hmm. I was very conscientious and ambitious too. Ambitious. Yeah. Only two. I mean, from yes. the list, from the list. Okay. Very good. Excellent. Thank you so much, Elio. Anyone else? Anyone else? No? Okay. Okay. Sandra, thank you so much. In my case, when I, I was younger, uh, I am. I, I was. was I was naive. 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 Naive and carefree. And carefree. Okay. Very good. Excellent. Very honest. Right. In my case, as I was telling you before, I was very argumentative, but extremely argumentative and very sensitive, and that you know, um, unfortunately, didn't help me. <laughs> okay, but let's go ahead and check this one, okay? Vamos a chequear el pronunciación de esta, de un solo, miren. Naive. Naive, right? And as you can see, you can use this one, right? Naive, right? Naive. And you can see it. Naive. Naive, right? So that's the word. Right, um, let me see if I can find a synonym for this one. Similar, innocent, es lo que yo le decía, right? Es que es uno como ignorante a veces de ciertas cosas. And you said, I, I was very naive. I was very innocent because I didn't know, because I was ignorant of the situation, right? Uh, I'm sophisticated, right? Artless, in ingenious, right, um, inexperienced. Okay, yo siento que lo que más pega es la primera y la última. Innocent and inexperienced, right? So that's naive. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Esta, ingenua. Vamos a ver esta. Ingenuous. Ingenuous. Mm -hmm. Ingenuous, right? That's another characteristic. If you see, usted se viene para acá en similar, está... Naive, otra vez, and in ingenuous, ingenuous, right? Ingenuous. Mm -hmm. So that's another word, right? Excellent, guys. Now, why am I saying this? Well, because as you know, we are different. You know, uh, for example, you you cannot compare, right? Um, the way we behave in in El Salvador, our society behaves, right? And also um, the way we, you know, uh, human beings behave at certain ages, right? That's something cultural, right, as well. So, for example, in the United States, right, um, they encourage, you know, teens. Whenever you get a uh, certain age, right, whenever you um, become uh what i don't want to say an adult because when you are 18 you're not an adult but they encourage you to leave your home to find a job to start working to uh, look for a roommate right and then to start building up your career right but in el salvador it's totally different right so when when, when you're in your 20s things are completely different. You're still living with your parents, right? Um, you still, you're still studying. I mean, you're not working sometimes. So things are different. Now, um, over here, right, we had the conversation. I want to go back to the conversation, right? So here we have the first part. I don't know if, 
it can be like a beginner. Like a beginner, dice eh, Francisco. Um, the ingenuous or the naive uh, word, Francisco. Oh, José Francisco. Naive. Ah, naive. Uh, no, 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 it's not a beginner, right? So a beginner, that would be something different. It's whenever you um, are new. When you are new in something, when when something is new, right? For you, you become a beginner. Mm -hmm. So I was saying that here's where we stopped with the conversation. And as you can see, some of the um, uh, adjectives, right, were used here. And we have a continuation. There is a continuation. So you had to listen to the rest of the conversation, right? And talk about turning points. Ya vamos a hablar de eso, pero ahorita I'll pause and I'll pass the attendance, okay? So let's begin. Eh, Alba Dir Portal Díaz. No. Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Present. Thank you. Eh, Ana Francisca García Nieto. Carlos Antonio González Nuila. Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutiérrez. Here. Thank you. Claudia Marcela Linares Urquía. Here. Thank you. Eh, Diego Anthony Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you. Dina Esmeralda Ayala López. Present. Thank you. Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present. Thank you. Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Present. Thank you. Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Present. Thank you. Jenny Lisset Campos Martínez. Jose Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Francisco Peña Peña. Mira ya. Thank you. Give me a second. Okay, ahí está. Eh, then Jose Isaías Portillo Ramos. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Jovito Torres Amaya. Present teacher. Thank you. Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. No. Eh, mm, María Susana Ayala de Flores. Present. Thank you. Marta Estela Díaz Sánchez. Present. Thank you. Marta Ruth Enríquez Reyes. Present. Thank you. Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present teacher. Thank you. Nady Ibis Méndez Salveño. Present teacher. Thank you. Rafael Antonio Morales Martínez. Present teacher. Thank you. Rebeca Estefanía Pereira Flores. Present. Thank you. Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Presente. Thank you. Present, right, or here. Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you. Rosa María del Milagro Pérez de Paz. I'm here. Thank you. Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present teacher. Thank you. Jensi Marlene Leon Lopez. And Zulma Beatriz Perez Caldames. Present. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, so then we have the second, you know, um, attendance. Um, present teacher. Who said present? Can you have present? <laughs> Who was that? Jensi. <laughs> ah, Jensi. Thank you so much. Sorry, Jensi. Don't worry. Okay, thank you, Jensi. Very kind. Very good. So, guys, let's continue, right? I was saying that um, this, the, the conversation that we had, right, uh, yesterday between these two guys, as you can see from the picture, right, uh, we all have our younger version and our today's version, right? And they were using some um, time closes, right? So here, guys, as homework, what I would ask you to do is to um, keep in mind those vocabulary words, okay? 
¿Cómo así, teacher? Because sometimes, remember this. If you want um, to explain something, if you want to give a sequence to something, you need some uh, time expressions, right? And what are those time expressions? Where are the ones that you have on the on the on the screen, right? So before, after, once, the moment, as soon as, until, and by the time. So within the conversation, we were able to identify some of those uh, time expressions, right? So what were you like when you were younger, right? What were you like when you were younger? When I was a kid, I was kind of irresponsible, okay? What made you change? There, there is something, well, there's always something that makes you change, right? Graduating from high school, oh, what do you mean, right? Well, until I graduated, I'd never had any important responsibilities, but then I went to I went off to college, right? I know what you mean. I was really immature, right? When I was a teenager. So what made you change, right? I think I became more mature after I got my first job and moved away from home. Once I had a job, I became totally independent. Where do you work? I worked for my dad at the bank. So what are the adjectives that you can find in the conversation, guys? Adjectives that you can find or identify in the conversation. Some of them are not in the list, okay? So what are those adjectives that you can find? You can activate your microphone, right? If you want to uh, say them out loud. Responsibility. Responsible. Irresponsible, maybe an irresponsible. Yeah. What else? Mature. Mature, very good. Mature and the opposite, right? Immature, maybe. Yeah. What else? Independent. Independent, very good. Independent, right? That's all what we thrive for, right? Es lo que, pues sí, a lo que todos le, le apostamos, right? Uh, to become independent, right? Very good. So those are, you know, more adjectives that you can find. Let me just bring this over here and let's continue. Uh, we talked a little bit about the time closes yesterday and you were going to complete this exercise. Did you complete it? Completaron ya this one, 1.4? 1, 1. Yes. yes. Okay, very yes. good. Um, any questions, guys, about that? No. Okay. In this, in this, in this uh, one point five, mm -hmm. it was repeating the uh, the record. The, the yeah. record uh -huh. was repeating and repeating and repeating. I don't know if a problem with the platform. Mm, okay, let's go ahead and check. No worries. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to access to the platform right now. Si me deja, porque no veo aquí. No veo que me deje. Um, no parece ser el caso, pero... Esperemos un momento. I'm going to access to the platform so we can listen to the uh, to the audio again. Okay, no okay, worries. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's it's loading right now. So we're going to check this one. And I guess if I'm not mistaken, I guess it's this one over here. Let me see. I think it's this one. Let me check. Um, yep, see, it's this one, okay? Listen to three people describe important events in their lives. Complete the chart. Obviously, you were going to do it in a different way. Different way, I'm sorry. We have Sally, Henry, and Debbie, right? So those were the three people um, that were included in the audio. Fíjense que no sé si es porque la página está saturada o qué es lo que está pasando, pero no me deja acceder a la plataforma. Pero no se preocupen que ahí lo voy a dejar cargando ya cuando logre ingresar. Entonces, we're going to listen to the, uh, to the audio. 
And if possible, we're going to complete the exercise together. Okay. Now, uh, what else? Let's see. Besides this one, right? Um, you know, the vocabulary that we were discussing before, it's included in the platform, right? So the idea here, guys, is for you to be able to, um, to identify new words. No nos quedamos con lo mismo, chicos. No nos quedamos con esos adjetivos básicos, ¿verdad? Because we are in a, well, in the advanced level, right? So we need to learn words according or based on the level that we are at right now right so just learn them by heart <clears throat> ah, ya me dejo entrar, permítame. this is another list esa es otra lista siempre del mismo libro but it, this one includes more aquí tenemos ambitious argumentative carefree esta que es muy buena, un adjetivo muy bonito, generous, right, generous. Uh, there are lots of people that are very generous, right, and and that's that's something good. Uh, we have immature, naive, selfish, this one, right, this is a very common adjective, you know, among uh, teens and people in their 20s, right? Selfish. Aquí se tenemos sensible. Remember, sensible, sensato, sensitive, sensible. Okay? Sophisticated and tolerant, right? Tolerant. It's actually, guys, this is a requirement, right? Es un, es un requisito hoy en día, right? So we need to be tolerant. Otherwise, right? We will make mistakes if we're not tolerant. So the idea for you was to make up your sentences. I think people in their 20s and 30s tend to be more ambitious, right? Yes, but I think people in their teens can be ambitious too because blah, blah, blah. The idea was for you to provide your answers, right? Okay, aquí tengo el listening. Voy a pasar un poquito acá. And let me do something going to duplicate this one in case it gets stuck, right? And we have uh, 1.5, right? 1.5 over here. Give me a second. Bye. Okay. So, vamos a escucharlo. Acá, you just click on here. No, perdón. Eh, aquí. Para abrirlo aparte, ¿verdad? Just open it up, you click there, and it will direct you to the audio from the uh, drive it, it is, you know, playing from. Page 74. Can you hear? Yes. Okay. Yes. Very yes. Excellent. Excellent. Exercise four. Listening. Important events. Part A. Listen to three people describe important events in their lives. Complete the chart. 1. Sally. What really a turning point for me was when I learned Spanish. I was always kind of scared of learning a foreign language, yet I was really envious of kids who could speak language. But when I started learning Spanish, I found I was actually pretty good at it. And the moment I reached that breakthrough stage, you know, when you discover you can actually speak and communicate with people in the language, I felt really proud of myself. I realized that learning a foreign language wasn't an impossible thing after all. Now I can speak three, Spanish, Italian, and German. And I'm taking Korean this year. 2. Henry I'm a twin, and my twin brother and I have always been very close. We always did everything together, and we were never apart for any time at all until we were 18. Then we went to different colleges in different towns, and that was the first time we had ever really had to cope on our own. I think it was good in a way, because we both became more confident and independent. Until then, I had always had my brother to depend on whenever I ran into a problem. But once I went away to college, 
I realized I was actually capable of working things out on my own. 3. Debbie I guess I was always pretty shy in school, and I didn't share a lot of things with people, not even with my parents. Then one time it was awards day at school. I didn't think I was getting any prizes or anything, and neither did my parents. So we were all pretty surprised when the principal announced that I was the top student in my class. Afterward, I didn't think too much about it, but then people suddenly started treating me differently. You know, I think some of the kids in school started looking up to me, and I became a lot more outgoing after that. Page 74. Exercise 4. Part B. Listen again. Okay, so we have listened the first time, right? And we have three different situations, three different experiences, right? So we got Sally, Henry, and Debbie, okay? So based on what you could hear about Sally, right? There are three important events, right? And choose what was the turning point for each of them right so what do you think about sally was because uh, i mean did she um become no sorry she, yeah did she become the top student in her class she learned spanish or he and his brother went to different college what do you think she learned, she learned spanish. Spanish. very good right like you guys right and uh, whenever you start learning a language at the beginning, it's very difficult, but you have to be, uh, you have to persevere, right? You have to be very persistent. Then what about Henry? What do you think? He and his yeah, brother went to different, different college. Different college. Excellent. Very good, right? So they were doing the same all the time. They were going same places, etc. But all of a sudden things changed. What about Debbie? She was the top student in her class. Okay, very good. So as you can see, guys, there is a phrase over here. And these three situations are called turning points, right? So what is a turning point? Well, a turning point based on the information that we got here, it's a time at which a decisive decisive or decisivo, verdad? decisive change in a situation occurs, especially one with beneficial results. So when, cuando usamos la frase turning point, we are talking about something positive, okay? Something positive, something beneficial. So that means that there was a situation and there was a consequence, and that consequence was positive, right? So a turning point, again, is a time at which a decisive change in a situation occurs, especially one with beneficial results, okay? And I'm going to, if you want, I'm going to share it with you through the chat. In what time is it, by the way? Oh, it's early. I'm going to leave it there okay so that's a turning point right so she learned spanish he and his brother went uh, to different colleges and um debbie she was she became the top student in her class right so all of those were the turning point so now let's listen to the second part listen to the audio program again and choose how it affected him or her Oh, yeah. Hay que volver a ponerlo. Se queda ahí calladito. Hay que darle aquí. Clic otra vez. Page 74. Exercise 4. Listening. Important events. Part A. Listen to three people describe important events in their lives. Complete the chart. 1. Sally One thing that was really a turning point for me was when I learned Spanish. I was always kind of scared of learning a foreign language. 
Yet I was really envious of kids who could speak another language. But when I started learning Spanish, I found I was actually pretty good at it. And the moment I reached that breakthrough stage, you know, when you discover you can actually speak and communicate with people in the language, I felt really proud of myself. I realized that learning a foreign language wasn't an impossible thing after all. Now I can speak three, Spanish, Italian, and German. And I'm taking Korean this year. Two, Henry. I'm a twin, and my twin brother and I have always been very close. We always did everything together, and we were never apart for any time at all until we were 18. Then we went to different colleges in different towns, and that was the first time we had ever really had to cope on our own. I think it was good in a way, because we both became more confident and independent. Until then, I had always had my brother to depend on whenever I ran into a problem. But once I went away to college, I realized I was actually capable of working things out on my own. 3. Debbie I guess I was always pretty shy in school, and I didn't share a lot of things with people, not even with my parents. Then one time it was awards day at school. I didn't think I was getting any prizes or anything, and neither did my parents. So we were all pretty surprised when the principal announced that I was the top student in my class. Afterward, I didn't think too much about it, but then people suddenly started treating me differently. You know, I think some of the kids in school started looking up to me, and I became a lot more outgoing after that. Okay, so I think Page we have already 70. we have already fan, uh, found out that the audio is playing well, right? So, pero si ustedes pudieron escuchar la razón por la que se queda de ten, de, se detiene o se repite es por por el internet, right? So probably that's the reason why uh, some of you had that. Um, that problem or that issue. So what happened with Sally? What was the positive consequence or how it affected him or her? What about Sally? Feel proud of. Feel proud of. Exactly. She felt proud of learning a new language, which was, which was, I'm sorry, Spanish. What about Henry? Independent. Independent. Very Independent. Good. Correct. That's true, right? Whenever you are on your own, you have to become independent, right? In English, the same as be on your own. Ahí se lo puede digitar en el chat. Be on your own es cuando ya uno está, por, uno tiene que hacer las cosas por sí mismo, right? So whenever you are on your own, you have to look for ways. You have to look for solutions, right? And you need to uh, start learning to become more independent. And what about Debbie? It became a lot of more of going. Became a lot more of going. Yes, exactly. She became more outgoing. So meaning that she became not an extrovert, porque eso es outgoing, right? So es un extrovertido o extrovertida. She became more confident right she became more talkative and she started you know to um, mingle with her with her peers so as you can see right all our exercises all our answers are correct okay mm -hmm. Liam. Uh, i have a problem with the exercise 1.4 1.4 okay very good exercise number five exercise number five let's see Bear with me. O sea, yo lo puse de varias maneras, pero siempre me suele mal. Bye. No problem. Ahorita vemos la, la, la razón. So, number five. Ah, dice. No, pero, pero no es este. Es no. ¿Cuál será? Aquí hay otro. Hay ah, un. No, ¿Un puente? No. Ajá, ese, ese. Ok, very good. Give me sí. a moment. Que tengo que abrirlo en dos paginitas, 1.10. Y acá, permítame. 
There we go. Okay, so we have knowledge check, right? So instructions, read each statement, rearrange the regret or hypothetical situation given in order to complete information. No period is necessary, but remember capital letters, right? So with number five, okay, it says, if I've saved money or if I had saved money, right? I, what? Si yo hubiera guardado, ¿verdad? If I had saved money, yo no estaría, ¿verdad? No estaría, en, en español decimos uh, acabado. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have broken. Mm, pero aquí el verbo ya no es have, ¿verdad? En este I caso... Ah, muy bien. Sería I wouldn't be, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. Porque ya estamos hablando de un estado, right? De cómo, cómo es que nosotros estaríamos en ese momento, ¿verdad? I wouldn't, muy bien, I wouldn't be what? Broken. As okay. broke. As broke, ¿verdad? As broke. As. As. Uh -huh. oh. I am now. Muy bien. Exactly, right? So at the end, you will get it like this, right? So I wouldn't be as broke as I am now. No estaría tan acabado, decimos en español, como lo estoy ahora. Tan como, recordemos eso, que as, as, tanto como, ¿verdad? I wouldn't be as broke as I am now. No estaría así de uh, quebrado o acabado como lo estoy ahora. ¿Ok? Entonces, that's about the hypothetical situation thing that I wanted to talk about, right? ¿Alguien más que tenga preguntas? The number four, teacher. Number four, vaya, number four. Veamos number four. Me dice, if I had studied harder in school, right? If I had studied harder in school, ¿ok? Entonces, Esto es possibility, and it's a hypothetical situation as well. Entonces, ¿qué, ¿cuál sería el auxiliar que vamos a utilizar? Dependiendo well, ahí. Ok, muy bien. Ok, I could, could what? Would have. Muy bien, could have. Le learned. Learned. Mm -hmm. Learned what? A lot more. Muy bien. A lot more. Mm -hmm. Muy bien. Okay, let's see. And that is correct, right? So remember. Y piense que es de hallarle como esa forma en español. Es lo que yo les comentaba, right? That sometimes it's a little bit difficult to understand how it works in Spanish. And that's why it is more difficult to understand it in English, right? Entonces, if I had studied harder in school, I could have learned a lot more. Pude, uh, uh, en este caso, pude haber aprendido más, pero no lo hice. And I cannot change that now. That's why it's a hypothetical situation about something that could have been done differently, but it wasn't. And now it's too late to change that. Ahora es demasiado tarde para cambiarlo. So that's about hypothetical situations, right? It's something in the past. Listen to this. It's about something in the past that could have been done differently, but it wasn't. And now it's too late to change that or to change it, right? So that's how it works, okay? Any other question, guys? The number one. The number one, okay? So it says, if I had listened, or if I'd listened to my parents, right? So what do you think? It's going to be the order that we have here. I will have. I could. How? Muy bien. I would. Have, 
more pragmatic decision. Made. Made, made more pragmatic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pragmatic decisions, right? Muy bien. Okay. So let's go ahead and check and see if it's correct. Yes, it is. Okay. Muy bien. Entonces aquí les pongo the, um, the answer in the chat, right? So if I had listened to my parents, I would have made, yo hubiera hecho, ¿verdad? Hubiera hecho. Teacher, ¿y cómo entonces hago para que se me quede? Vaya, chicos. This is the thing. Y yo, eh, mi humilde opinión, nos cuesta, pues yo me apunto en la lista, por cierto, nos cuestan mucho los... Eh, los modas no eh, los conditionals o los hypo, no. eh, o las situaciones hipotéticas porque nos cuesta en español de hecho en español a veces lo decimos mal verdad entonces eh, cuando es una es una es un conditional verdad en, y es una situación hipotética right we need to be very careful and try to have um, Try to keep try to keep an eye right on the on the auxiliaries or the models that we're using, right? So here, yo sé que would lo que hace, verdad, a la par del verbo es que le da la terminación ia. Por ejemplo, I would have, yo tendría, verdad? I would do, yo haría. Pero ya cuando yo estoy hablando de hypothetical situations, I would have made. Yo hubiera hecho, ¿verdad? O sea, ya en el pasado lo hubiera cambiado, pero no lo puedo cambiar, right? So that's that's why we need to be very careful with uh, with that. Any other question, guys? The number two. The number two. Okay, number two. Number two, sin el de, ¿verdad? Number two. Okay, so let's see. If I'd been more active, if I'd be more active, right? ¿Qué pasaría? ¿Qué hubiese pasado, mejor dicho? Si hubiese hecho, si hubiese hecho más ejercicio durante eh, diciembre y no hubiera comido tanto pavito, ¿verdad? Y pan y todo lo demás. So, what are the things that would be different now? Well, I wouldn't have been I wouldn't. Be. Okay, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be overweight. Have be, be, be overweight, I think it's over here. I wouldn't be overweight, right? If I'd been more active. Si yo hubiera estado más activa, si hubiera hecho ejercicio, I wouldn't be overweight. No estaría con sobrepeso, right? Or no, te, no, no, si no estaría porque tenemos B, right? Or I, uh -huh, I wouldn't be overweight. Okay, let's go ahead and see if it's correct. Yes, it is, right? I wouldn't be overweight. Y la última. If I'd been more ambitious, what would have happened? I could have... Muy bien. I could have gotten... Uh, a promotion. Muy bien. I could have gotten a promotion, right? I could have gotten a promotion. Let's see if it's correct. Yes, it is. Okay. And now we have our exercise complete, right? Any other question, guys? No? Oh, not yet. Pongámoslo por acá, entonces. Now, um, here we have, right, that particular topic. It says by the end of this class, participants will learn, understand, and practice expressing regrets and hypothetical situations with should have plus past participle and if clauses, right? So, oh, by the way, Por cierto, chicos, lo diré así en español rapidito. Recuerden que nosotros comenzamos el día de ayer las clases, que es un miércoles. Quiere decir que ese lunes y martes tenemos que reponerlos, ¿verdad? Entonces, el día de mañana sí va a haber clase, igual la otra semana también. Es de lunes a viernes. 
yo sé, ¿verdad? Que todos es, esperamos ese viernes para disfrutarlo, ¿verdad? Pero en este caso, las primeras dos semanas del módulo sí llevan clase viernes, ¿verdad? Así que, this week is going to be from Wednesday to Friday. And next week it's going to be from Monday through Friday. And then next, next week it's going to be from Monday through Thursday. Okay? Just for you to remember that. So tomorrow we have class. Okay? Okay. okay. Very good. Okay. Excellent. Now, expressing regrets and describing hypothetical situations, right? Uh, here we have two situations. Okay, so um, e with expressing regret, we have two examples, right? It says, I should have studied something more practical when I was in college. Y eso nos pasa a todos, ¿verdad? I shouldn't have waited so long to choose a major, right? No debí. Ay, es que debí haber estudiado más, ¿verdad? O debí haberle puesto atención a mi mamá cuando me decía que hiciera esto, que hiciera lo otro. O debí haber comprado mi casa, ¿verdad? Cuando estaba, estaban más baratas, ¿verdad? O debí haber cuidado mi carro mejor, ¿verdad? Etc. Entonces, there are many things that we say in Spanish, right? Y esa misma traducción es la que tiene acá en inglés. Perdón, interpretación. I should have studied. Debí haber estudiado. I shouldn't have waited. No debía haber esperado. Right? Ese have es ese, el haber, ¿verdad? I shouldn't have waited. Debí haber estudiado. I shouldn't have, perdón, debí haber esperado. Debí haber esperado. Entonces, cuando nosotros expresamos regret, right? Eh, teacher, what is the meaning of regret? Well, All those things that you say, no, I shouldn't have done that, <laughs> right? I, I would do things differently now, right? So uh, regret, uh, it's a very difficult feeling. And we all go through that, okay? And then describing hypothetical situations, right? Now, but describing hypothetical situations, we know that we have, an ex we have the structure, right? And there is a formula. En el video, por cierto, se la deja. Ya la vamos a ver aquí, ¿ok? Um, we have, um, if I been more ambitious in college, I could have learned another language. Mm. Pero, ¿qué sucede con las hypothetical situations that I cannot go back? I cannot go back and I cannot change that, right? If I hadn't wasted so much money last year, I would have my own apartment now. But I did. Pero sí lo hice, entonces no lo puedo cambiar. Right? Entonces, what's the difference, teacher, between expressing regret and describing hypothetical situations? Well, si nosotros estamos hablando de arrepentimientos, porque eso es regret, ¿verdad? If we're talking about regret, Um, I'm just expressing something, you know, that I would change. Okay, so estoy, estoy expresando algo de lo que me arrepiento. Algo, no, no debía haber hecho esto o debía haber hecho esto, right? But I'm not talking about, you know, um, the thing that I would have done differently, okay? Entonces, ahí no incluyo lo que yo hubiera hecho. En ese, en ese caso, ¿verdad? Que, que, que tuve esa situación, sino que solo expreso mi arrepentimiento. Eso es todo. With the hypothetical situation is different. Why, teacher? Because I am given a solution to a problem that doesn't exist anymore. Or I'm given a solution or a possibility for something that cannot be changed, okay? Entonces, veámoslo así, ¿verdad? When, when I am describing the hypothetical situation, I'm given a solution or I'm given a possibility even though we cannot change that, right? So if I had been more ambitious in college, I could have learned another language. So I'm setting, you know, the, uh, the scenario. So yo prácticamente pongo la situación, la situación, 
y una posibilidad una, o una posible solución a ese problema que ya no lo puedo arreglar, ¿verdad? En cambio, aquí es diferente, right? For example, if I had been more ambitious in college, I could have, I could have learned another language. Entonces, aquí arriba, ¿cómo lo diría yo? ¿Cómo diría estas dos cosas? Yo diría, oh, I, I should have learned another language when I was in college. Oh, mm, I should have been more ambitious in college, right? That's the difference. Then we have, if I hadn't wasted so much money last year, I would have my own apartment now, right? If I hadn't wasted. Entonces, ¿qué es lo que yo tengo que hacer? Me voy a adelantar un poquito aquí, luego, luego regreso, no se preocupe. Entonces, ¿qué es lo que tengo que hacer? Aprenderme la fórmula. Porque si yo no me aprendo la fórmula, entonces para mí va a ser más difícil identificar los elementos, right? So that's the reason why you need to always have the elements, you know, handy or here, right, in, in your mind. So you can remember the structure, okay? Pero igual, mañana vamos a continuar hablando más al respecto, chicos. For now, I'm going to pass the attendance. Y ya vamos a ir, pues, finalizando. Give me a moment. Let me look for it. Okay, here we have eh, Alba Dir Portal Díaz, Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Here. Thank you. Eh, Ana Francisca García Nieto. Eh, Carlos Antonio González Nuila. Here. Thank you. Eh, Cecilia Elizabeth Guardado Gutiérrez. Here. Uh, thank you, Claudia Marcela Linares Urquilla. Here. Thank you. Diego Anthony Melendez Mayen. Present. Thank you. Uh, Dina Esmeralda Ayala López. Uh, Liu Fuentes Velarde. Present. Thank you. Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Present. Thank you. Uh, Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Person. Thank you. Jenny Lisette Campos Martinez. Present. Thank you. Eh, Jose Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Francisco Peña Peña. Present. Thank you. Jose Isaías Portillo Ramos. I'm here. Thank you. Jose Jovito Torres Amaya. Present. Thank you. Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Maria Azucena Ayala de Flores. Present. Thank you. Marta Estela Díaz Sánchez. Present. Thank you. Marta Ruz Enrique Reyes. Right here. Thank you. Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Nady Ibis Mendez Albeño. Present teacher. Thank you. Rafael Antonio Morales Martinez. Present. Thank you. Rebecca Estefania Pereira Flores. Present. Thank you. Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Present. Thank you. Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you. Rosa Maria del Milagro Pérez de Paz. I'm here. Thank you, Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present. Thank you, Jensi Marlene Leon Lopez. And uh, Zulma Beatriz Perez Galdán. Present. Thank you so much. Okay, guys. Present, so I'm... teacher Jensi. Thank you so much, Jensi. Uh, so, guys, I'm going to stop here, okay? But tomorrow we're going to continue, okay? And we're going to have a session in the breakout rooms so you can practice hypothetical situations with some of your classmates, okay? So, thank you so much for joining today. And let's meet tomorrow, okay? Have a good night. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye, sister. Bye-bye.